Hey, what's up, bookworms and art of Fabrians? We are back to talk a little more spoiler talk for Rhythm of War. This is going to be for part four of the penultimate edition of this. This is chapters 73 through 97, interludes 9, uh, sorry, 10, 11, and 12. Math is tough, I keep telling you guys. But uh, here's the thing, if you guys haven't caught my earlier stuff, you can find parts one, two, and three on the channel here. Uh, basically, if you uh, are, are returning, you weren't mad at me about part three. Uh, there was a couple people who uh, were a little flustered with my opinions on part three. Uh, I had one person told me that I've only made that video to get attention. So, <laughs> yes, a 42-year-old man with anxiety loves attention. Anyways, guys, uh, here's the thing. I'm going to be talking about all those parts. So if you haven't read that far, I would recommend. I haven't started part five yet. Uh, I'm probably going to release this, obviously, later. I'm trying to space these videos out. I know most people are already done with the book, but you know what? There are some who are not. So uh, I, I think that spacing it out a little bit like that's fine. You know what? If I'm the one booktuber who, who doesn't have a Rhythm of War review up, in the, uh, the month of November, hey, you know what, so be it. That's fine. That's fine by me. But, uh, you know, not that much further to go here. This was a big old beefy part, just like part three. I'm actually surprised. It looks like part five is so small. But let's get into it, guys. Uh, we're going to start by talking about my girl. You know who that is. We're talking about Vinley here. Look, the flashbacks continue to be a snoozer for me. So if you want to know my opinion on that and you've missed it at this point, check out part three. Because all I'm going to do is kind of regurgitate everything I said about the flashbacks. I continue to think that Sanderson picked the wrong flashback character for this book. And I'll get into who I think that is here in a little bit. But let's just say it's not Vinley. It's not one of the singers. Uh, but uh, look, the Eurothiru stuff, the present day stuff with Vinley is actually pretty good, this chapter. I actually liked it quite a bit. Uh, you get to see her work with Liren and, and uh, Hesina was really good. Uh, Hes Hes Hesina? Hesina. Too many names and fantasies, you guys. Uh, but I, but the stuff with Relaine and David is actually a little better. In fact, both those, uh, their own POV chapters I'll talk about here in a second. But uh, it starts to feel kind of like a jailbreak story. You know, she wants to get out of the tower. She wants to get these people out of the tower. Uh, it, it seems it's something I like. I've always, I'm always a sucker. Maybe it's because I've been such a fan of something like Shawshank Redemption uh, for years that I just, I love a good jailbreak story. And while it doesn't quite get into the nuts and bolts of like a jailbreak story, I still like it enough to say I was enjoying, I wasn't groaning when it was a, a Vinley chapter this time. And some of the stuff that she's doing, seeing some of her powers is really cool stuff. Uh, I really, really like the part where she saves Lyft. Uh, I, do, I did enjoy that part uh, quite a bit, seeing her try to get to that next ideal. You know, it's a really, a really neat. It started to actually feel like a little bit of a journey for her, which I feel like I'm not getting in the flashback. So a little bit of a progression there. Uh, I, I do like the direction that she's headed in. But uh, look, Liren just continues to be a dick. I mean, this guy is just a dick. I, I don't know how I can ever get back on board with this guy to the point where he's like, look, if Kaladin's hurt, and he needs medical attention. I'll take care of him because it is my, you know, my duty to, to take care of someone that's injured. But then I'm going to send him off to go be judged for his crimes. I'm like, dude, as a dad, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because <laughs> you know? I mean, like my kids are eight and five right now. I have, have very many of that thing where I'm like, hey, you're making bad decisions. I don't agree with the life decisions you're making yet. But I'm sure when I get there, I'm going to be like, look, they're going to make decisions that I'm not happy about. But you know what? It's their life. I made decisions that my, you know that my parents weren't happy about. I mean, my mom's still not happy about some of them. So, I mean, it's uh, one of those things where looking at it as a parent, I'm just like, God, man, what is wrong with you? These are your kids, man. Uh, Relaine, though, I do like that he does get some time to shine. I like getting his POV chapter because it shows that he's being ostracized by both sides. Humans and the singers both do not trust him now. And seeing how tough that is, uh, a bit of a struggle for him. And he really kind of, you know, takes up the hero role here with uh, with Kaladin kind of uh, uh, missing, or not missing, uh, kind of unconscious. Uh, so he Kaladin basically sits out this section, except for one, which I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, yeah, seeing him kind of take up and lead like the, 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 you know, the bridge four mantra here. He's the one that's kind of leading the party with David. And I want to talk about this David chapter because, wow, wow, was that good? Was that unexpected? Look, I hadn't thought about David at all. I mean, he had a very brief part in Way of Kings when Kaladin saved him. Uh, I just, I never really even thought about this character. But again, this is kind of personal. I mean, this, is, this is something that you guys might not like, and the reason that I did like it is uh, my five-year-old is on the spectrum. He has a, a speech delay, and he did not talk for, shoot, about the first four years of his life, really, except like a couple of words. He's, he's coming around now that he's uh, seen a speech pathologist. But there's, there's things in here where he talks about how he could talk this whole time. He just didn't want to talk 
because, you know, uh, he didn't want people to think he was slow. Man, it just completely broke my heart uh, as a dad with someone, you know, that, that dealing with something like that. So that's, that again, that's what Sanderson does with this series, I think, that really just seems to connect with me. All my criticisms and all of the things I like that it's just in a fantasy story. These things, every one of these books now, he's four for four with finding something in my life that I've been able to relate to. And that's why I think uh, even as, as down as I've been on some parts of this book, it's why this series will always be super special to me. So that was a really, really good chapter. I could not say enough about it. And it was really cool to, to continue this far of the series. Seeing some of those no no name people you assume were red shirts uh, on Bridge Four getting development that's awesome that's just an awesome job by him. Uh, I, I, like I said, I, I did like the kind of the, the breakout thing. I did like her saving Lyft. Lyft has been very less annoying in this book. Uh, I, what I said about Lyft was like, look, I think Lyft's a fine character. I just can use small amounts of her. I don't need I don't need Vinley level uh, flashbacks <laughs> of Lyft, right? So uh, that that's all. I, I know people think that I just I just hate lift and i can't get past it but uh small 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 bits of lift not so bad not so bad let's talk about navani here now navani i think this is very much turning into navani's book now i know that vinley and ish and i are the flashback characters but this feels like very much navani's book and to the point where i feel like why wouldn't why wasn't navani the background character why was she not the flashback character I felt like we could have got a lot of that stuff about her, you know, with Dalinar and, and, and Gavilar trying to make that decision, all those things. Just her previous life, you know, before royalty. It was just one of those things where I was like, I really think that as much development as we've gotten from Navani in this book and gotten to know her, I really feel like she would have been better suited to be the flashback character in this. So not going to talk about what should have been. It's just what we're talking about what is, but that's just a... If I was writing it, that's the way that I would have went with it. I would probably would have appreciated it a little bit more, I think. The bigger focus here, I think, in these chapters is that Raboniel is cunning as hell. She is manipulative. She just continues every time. He, look, Navani is sharp as a tack, right? Super, super smart. And Raboniel outsmarts her like every time. I know what I said in the last video. is like, well, you know, you're talking about multiple lifetimes versus one lifetime, right? You can't really compare with that kind of knowledge. But it just, it just every time it's like, Navani, stop. What do you do? I know you're excited, you know, because, you know, this person's making you feel valuable and Gavilar did a very bad job at making you feel like that. So I, I, I understood why she felt like that, but it was just like, she's very clearly playing you and you're smart enough to know this. And uh, it's just, it's just, it sucks. It sucks seeing a character you think is just like so smart, just get completely outmaneuvered every single time. And again, guys, the science stuff in this. <laughs> Look, stormlight, real light, void light, starlight, rainbow bright, bright light. I don't, I can't keep up with all this stuff. Look, and it's not a, well, you're just too stupid to realize it. it you think what you want to think, guys. It's just not interesting stuff for me to read. I know it has a purpose. It does. And we see at the end of this chapter that it had a purpose. It just doesn't make it a riveting read for me. So that's a gripe for me is I feel like Sanderson got so, so mixed up in teaching class with this book that I felt like it's the first time in this series that stuff is just dragged so much that I'm like, I'm not having a good time here. So uh, I know a lot of people really like the science stuff in this. And that's awesome. I'm glad that you enjoy it. It wasn't clicking for me. But uh, yeah, you do get the good payoff as you see Raboniel uh, using this creation that she makes to uh, to kill her daughter, which was a very like, what in the hell is going on? So like you uh, solidified yourself as a straight up James Bond villain with that move. But uh, yeah, Navani basically just created a nuclear bomb for the uh, for the team that she's warring against. So not a very good look there. But uh, yeah, very much definitely seems like this is turning into Navani's book. Don't know what's going to happen in, in part five yet. But as of right now, I'm saying if you can go through each book and you can say it's that character's book, like book one's Kaladin's, book two's Shalon's, book three's Dalinar's, I think this book is definitely Navani's, even though she is not the flashback character. Before I get into the meat of this here, and that's Shalon Adlin, I want to talk about, real quick about Kaladin. Like I said, he is mostly uh, unconscious, you know, injured, this part of the of the book, so he doesn't really have very much. He does have one chapter, and it is, a, it is the chapter with wit. And this is just weird. I did not understand that this was going to be such a point of divisiveness with the fan base because half well there's a portion of the sanderson fan base that he could write the abcs in a chapter and everybody would say it's the greatest thing ever written i understand that so there are going to be ones that like that chapter for sure and then there's going to be the ones 
like me, maybe that were kind of struggling a little bit with parts of this book who thought, well, that was kind of pointless. I kind of fall somewhere in the middle. I liked the story that Witt told. Don't see it really having a lot of point in the book. I mean, I, I get why it was there. I just It kind of felt like something that was over long and an already overly long book. But again, I like the story, uh, you know, but... Is this the is this the second time or is this the third time or is it been every book that Witt just shows up to tell a story to Kaladin? <laughs> it seems like every once in a while he'll just show up and tell Kaladin a story. But uh, uh, I, I thought it was a fun story and I'm just glad that Kaladin knows about dogs now. So there, there's that. Let's talk about Shallan and Adolin here. And uh, I think this, uh, I think the way that a lot of people feel about part four is the way that I felt about part three, and that you're not they're not really crazy about it. One thing I have noticed with Stormlight fans is apparently every character is sacred. You are not allowed to criticize any character in this story unless it's Shallan. And I actually like Shallan, so I don't understand why uh, why <laughs> why that's the uh, the, the one the one uh, little footnote there. Apparently, you're allowed to crap on Shallan. Look, I like Shallan in this book. Uh, I like Adolin in this book. So I'm going to talk about their part probably at length here because they did kind of dominate this chapter as I expected when they were both gone. For all of chapter three, I expected part four to be theirs. But um, I think she has a real arc in this book. Uh, you know, what really shocked me right off the bat is you find out that I was wrong in my last video. Uh, Pattern actually is the spy. Sort of. Sort of. You know, there actually is no spy. He has been using the cube to communicate with wit, you know, and, and who... Um, what, uh, we still don't know who uh, who killed Eli at this point. That's kind of like the big mystery now. We're like, okay, so there's no spy. So who who killed Eli? Uh, I went on record earlier saying I thought that it was actually uh, formless. I think I've been calling it the the fourth personality, but it's going by formless now. The capital F is like the uh, the mystery kind of persona that you get the answers to in this one. But uh, she contacts Mraze, and Mraze tells her he still wants her to find Ristares. Well, we find out that Ristares is actually the uh, the Harold Kellick. So like, okay, well, that's something. Uh, I knew it would be important somehow, uh, you know, because there isn't too many characters in the story series and keep giving everybody two or three names. It really helps a lot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and he is known as the high judge. Now, Adolin's got to, uh, he's got to face this trial. This is where it really just starts getting like, kind of like, okay, we'll go back to you, back to you, back to you, back to you. Uh, she talk, contacts Moraes again and Moraes says, yes, I want you to kill uh, the high judge, you know, and keep his soul in the dagger and, and all that stuff. And, and she's like, no way, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, well, you know, if you do that, then you can impersonate the high judge and that way you can get Adolin off the hook in this trial because, uh, long story short, Adolin has no chance in this trial. The deck is, the stack is, it's just, the deck is stacked against him. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and he's got no chance in this. They're just a railroading him from go here. So she starts to think, okay, well, we're going to do this. But then it's Vale and Radiant who both ban against her and say, hey, it's two on one. No, we vote no on this. We're not going to do that. And this is when Formless just like takes over and pushes everybody else down. So Formless is in charge now. And you're like, oh shit, she's actually going to do this, right? Now back to Adolin, you know, he's in a he's up a real shit creek. It looks like, you know, the crowd's against him. The, uh, the, 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 the person in charge of the trial is against him. He has no chance. It's only when Maya steps up and actually speaks and says, uh, no, the, the, the whole thing about the, uh, the recreants was that it was, an, it was a mutual agreement uh, between the, uh, the Radiant Sprint and the Radiant Sprint. They, they were all going to sacrifice themselves. So everyone is just kind of unequal to blame here. You can't just blame you know his ancestors. And so it's, uh, it's a cool uh, resolution. I'm glad that Maya is still kind of uh, being a character that uh, you know is having a relationship with Adolin. It's something I, I thought would maybe advance a little more in this book than it did. But, uh, you know, there's still part five, so maybe. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Right now, I'm like, I, I was kind of hoping a resolution for that. It seems like, basically, I want to know if Aelin was going to become a Radiant in this book or not. <laughs> so uh, that, that's 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 kind of the only bummer thing I have about that. But I guess the real big reveal here is that Formless actually turns out to be uh, Shallan. You know, it's, uh, it turns out Vale is, was basically just like a shield that she created to, to, to keep her from those really painful memories that she didn't want to deal with. Uh, hence the name Vale, right? And so Dale, Vale just, phew, Vale just goes away. And now Shallan is very much in control. I don't, I might have missed it. I don't know if that counts uh, Radiant Radiant 2 or if it's, if it's Shallan's just in control now completely. I've had a lot of people tell me that why they didn't like this. And I said, I like this. I like this a lot. It felt like a really, felt like it closed that arc that she began in Oathbringer. I felt like this kind of closed it off. But a lot of people are saying they don't like that this almost feels like Sanderson uh, giving the magic pill to, uh, you know, to mental illness. 
And uh, look, I don't think this is the end of it. She's obviously found a way to uh, to control some things, but to think that, hey, you know what? It's just me up here now. I don't think so. Uh, it's go There's still going to be a little bit of a struggle there. There's many things she's going to be dealing with. But uh, I, again, that didn't bother me. I didn't feel like it was unearned or anything like that. So I'm okay with it. And uh, yeah, it surprised me. I was happy. I was happy with it, uh, especially finding out that uh, technically I was right because it was Vale that, that, that killed Eli. So again, I was fine with it. I had a good time with it. Uh, that was about the the highlight of part four for me i liked it better than part three but uh yeah parts three and four are still very very meh to me uh not bad well i mean i still say the three is my least favorite part of a stormlight bark a book that i've read yet but this one's more on par with a, the middle of a or penultimate act penultimate part of a stormlight book but i certainly like the first two parts better and look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I like this book better the first time that Sanderson wrote it. You know what I'm talking about? Will the Time fans know what I'm talking about? It was called The Gathering Storm back then. It was called Towers of Midnight back then. Yes, I won't spoil that in case you haven't read those. But just know, this very much feels like a rehash of a couple of storylines in those two books. The Eurothero Attack and now this trial. It definitely feels like something that Sanderson's already written before. And... Uh, it's kind of mixed on which one I actually think is kind of better here. So uh, it's just one of those things where I just I feel like I've done this before and it's not what I expected in the setup to the closing of this five book arc. It really isn't hitting any of those boxes that I want at this point. And look, part five, I know Sanderson. It's probably going to knock my socks off and this is going to age very poorly. I mean, look, there's what I say, about 150 pages left in here. I'm sure it's going to be just like... <laughs> Well, I'm going to have a great time with it because Sanderson always ends his book strong. I know that. Uh, this book has just not been what I've expected up to this point. Again, guys, relax. I'm not calling it a bad book at all. It's just not what I was hoping for right now. And I think there are a lot of structure issues with the pacing. It does feel like a lot of uh, elongating some of these plots and some of these uh, these words just to get that word count up. So... I know that's controversial, and you know I only do this for attention, right? So that's why I have uh, some of these criticisms. But um, yeah, it's definitely not a bad book. But you know, before I've read part five, this is leading the charge for my least favorite Stormlight book, which is better than most book series best book. I'm just saying the bar has been super high, and I don't feel like it has cleared it yet. So guys, are you through part four? What did you think? Again, please feel free to dunk on me in the comments. I get a great, great kick out of it, and I will talk to you guys there.